Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of a YouTube channel I'm starting called Puff Kingdom. And this is my introduction to pea puffer fish and following my journey in keeping them and learning all about them. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So first thing I want to talk about is the size of the tank for these guys. Some people say that you can keep them in 5 gallon for one and then 3 gallons for every pea puffer after that. And some people say 10 gallons for one and then an extra pea puffer for every 3 gallons after that. Or it depends on the filtration. For me, this tank is a 40 gallon tank and I've got 8 pea puffers in here. As well as 4 Amano shrimp which I'll come to later. And for me, that's plenty of space because these guys, they've got enough space to do their own thing, chill out. They've also got, you know, if, if there's a bit of temperament issues, they get chased a little bit. They've got plenty of places to go and hide or go and search as well and get away from each other. So they have their own space. The next thing I want to talk about is the setup of the tank. So what pea puffers need is a lot of plants. What I started with here when I first got the tank was probably about four plants. Which look nice, but it's not really enough for them. So I've now got two of these Java ferns. One here and one up here. I've got a mini Anubius tied up here. Large Anubiuses, one here and one here. And I've got this plant. I can't remember what this one's called now. I got this from uh, the local fish store. So if anyone knows what this is called, please comment underneath the video and let me know what this one is. That one is for under the substrate for the root system. Which brings me to these guys and how they're attached. Now, because I don't have much of an idea on plants when I first started out, I wanted to get ones that I could stick to the wood so that they didn't need to actually be in a substrate to get the nutritions. So these guys are all clipped, as you can see here, with the metal clips they came in, or tied up with bands. So as soon as these guys start to root in, I'll take these off and I'll start growing and multiplying on the woods. The other plants I have here is Java Moss, which has grown out quite nicely. It looks a bit messy to be honest, but I quite like that natural look. And then on this side, not so much of it, but I've got Christmas Moss, which is much thicker and a lighter green. It probably looks nicer. Um, maybe I should get more of that to be honest. It looks really good. And i got spider wood in here. So I've got a few different pieces. There's a big cave here, which is one piece, the branch over, which is another. This tree is actually made up of one ground piece, which has got lots of sort of kind of almost spider legs growing off of it. And then it's got a taller piece at the top, which I've attached the other plants to to make it almost like a big tree effect with some moss on there as well. The moss I have attached with super glue. Now, super glue is non toxic once it's dried. So you can, before you put the wood in, super glue the glass, uh, the glass, the plants as you please. And then once it's dried, you can put them straight in the tank and they look fantastic. Especially if you look at this cave here, it looks nice and natural. The pea puffers absolutely love exploring it. These pea puffers are very, very active, as you can see. They don't really stop. So when you tank, you want lots and lots of them to explore. Uh, a few places for them to hide. And you really want to make sure that these guys can entertain themselves. Oh, we've seen a bit of aggression there. You can want to see these guys entertain themselves as much as possible. So we've got roots under here. You can see this puffer if he comes out of here any second now. Nope, you can hide under there. There he is. So as you can see, they really do explore every nook and cranny. Even underneath this tree, you've got a bit of a gap for them to go under as well and have a look around, which they certainly do. And they're very personable as well. They're really brilliant fish to keep. They're kind of almost like having a pack of little terriers or something. They're very confident fish. When I put my hand in there to do water changes when I'm moving things around, they'll often come right near to my hand and look at what I'm doing. And they're very curious, really curious. So yeah, you want to make sure there's plenty for them to do. Plenty of them to have a look around at. To keep themselves entertained. So, next up is a little bit of, I suppose, facts about them. These guys are from India, so they need warm waters. The temperature that I got this at is around 26 degrees. So you can have them at, I'd say probably between... 22 at the very coolest up to 28 although they have been known to be in warmer temperatures around 30 in the wild They need slow moving water. So that's why my tank filter an Eheim filter whilst it's quite powerful I got it facing the glass. So it's not actually blasting them around the tank So they get plenty of aeration and oxidization in the tank 
uh, without being blasted around. So that brings me to pH. And the pH on these guys, I would say between 7 and 8 is probably the kind of pH that you want. I've got around 7.5, I believe, when I tested it a couple of days ago. So that's kind of ideal if you can get around 7.5. But between 7 and 8, you should be fine. And yes, temperature, I've got this around 26 uh, to keep it nice and warm for them as well. Now, food for these guys, they can be a little bit picky and they're all different. So when I got these guys a month ago, seven of them were eating absolutely fine, but one of them wouldn't eat for a week and a half. So I was getting a bit worried about him, he's getting a bit skinnier, it's not this one here, but he was getting a bit skinnier. So after a week and a half, I decided to buy live bloodworms, I was feeding them frozen bloodworms, switched to live, and all of a sudden he would eat them. So you have to make sure that you do have a variety of food, because you're not necessarily going to have all the puffers wanting to eat the same thing, which is a bit annoying. But at the same time, it's good for them because they're going to get a bit of variety. You can also feed them on things like brine shrimp, which aren't necessarily the most healthy things for these guys because uh, they're quite uh, fatty foods. They're not particularly nutritional for them. But you can feed it to them from time to time. That's no problem at all. You've got other things like daphnia, which are great. Tiny, tiny little living creatures that they can feed on and then they can stay in the water for a while as well, which I've learned. And snails. Snails is a big one for these guys. You don't actually, there's an Armano shrimp there. You don't actually need snails as such to keep their beaks trim because these, oh, this guy is looking like he wants to have a little nibble. But as you can see, the Armano shrimp are very quick. That's actually the first time I've seen him go for one in ages, um, which is interesting. But generally, they do leave them alone. That's a bit of a one off, I've not seen that for a long, long time. Uh, yes, but for food, snails are really, really good. If you can get like a small tank where you're breeding them, that would be ideal, really. So you'd have to keep going and buying them or buying them online because you can buy them off eBay and places like that. So um, that's really, really good. If you haven't got a local fish store near you and you're wondering how you're going to get snails, eBay is a great place. People breed them and sell them there and you can get them delivered straight to your door, which is ideal. And yeah, you can set up a little basic tank and just put some bits of food in there for the snails to make sure that they're eating, change the water uh, regularly and that you'll have a free food source for these puffer fish. Yes, yeah, so that's a really, really handy thing to have if you can do it and everyone can. So that brings me to their sort of proper name as it will. These are pea puffers. You see them called dwarf puffers as well or pygmy puffers. But their scientific name, and I'll probably get this wrong, so the pronunciation police will be all over me on this one. I'm sure it is Carinatotrodon travancorian. Now that's probably been pronounced horrifically, but that's what it is. So deal with it. Okay. And that is their name. So like I say, they're from India, slow moving waters, warm waters. And that'll keep them really, really happy if you can get those prouters set up straight away. Because these guys, they're actually quite hardy, given that they're small fish. They're pretty hardy fish. So I wouldn't really stress too much if the temperature changes slightly. They'll, they'll deal with it pretty well. And that makes them another, that's another good reason why these fish are so brilliant to keep. This one's doing a bit of modelling for you there. Now sexing with these puffer fish is actually pretty easy once they get to adult size. So when you get them first off, you're probably not going to know really whether these guys are females or males. And as they get older, you'll see that the males have more iridescent lines. So I'll see if we can possibly get a bit of a close-up on these guys. You can't really see on this one so much. But there is one called Gerald. Let's see if I can find him. No. There goes Con. This one I'm not sure about yet. You could go either way from this stage. Uh, Kong, he, I think, yeah, probably is a female. But the males, they've got a darker patch generally under their bellies. It can be like a, a yellow dark line that runs across their bellies. And the main one as well, which shows the differences uh, in the way they look from being male to female, is the males will have iridescent, like, luminous wrinkle-like lines behind their eyes. I've got one called Gerald, which is somewhere. He's been a bit of a shy guy today. He's got luminous lines and iridescent sort of wrinkles behind his eyes all over the place so you can tell he's already a male and you really want if you can 
you want sort of a few more females than you've got males because the males can be very territorial and aggressive and people have had puffers where you know one's killed the other two if there's only a few of them so you want to do your best if you can to get uh, more females than males but if you do find out you know when it's too late you've got them they start to develop and you see you've got considerably more males than females you can try taking them back to the store you got them from and ask if you can swap them one or two males so that way you get a bit more of a balance because the last thing you want is these guys to be nipping each other because they're two brilliant fish for that you want to keep them looking trim looking their best looking buff not that they go to the gym but uh, yeah, as you can see these guys shoaling a little bit in the wild they do shoal in big big numbers at times so I think you're better off getting a larger tank, like this is 40 gallons, so I would suggest, you know, you could get 20 gallons and probably have four to six in there quite comfortably if you've got a lot of plants in there. But as I said before, you really do need to plant the crap out of this tank that you're, you've got, because these guys are incredibly curious, incredibly intelligent little fish. And if they haven't got enough to entertain themselves with, they'll look to each other and get a bit tetchy. So that's something really you want to keep in mind as well. Next up is tank mates. These guys are much, much, much better to have as a species only tank. So I would suggest not putting them with other, fi other fish. There are a few that have been known to work. The Otto Sinkless, which is an algae eater. That has actually had quite a lot of success, I believe, with people keeping them. But you want to have an established tank that's been running for maybe two months before you get them. Because Otto Sinkless, uh, due to the way they're caught as well, with, um, I suppose, poisons in the water to bring them up to the surface. They're quite, I guess, kind of tender fish, if you will, for lack of a better word. And they can die pretty easy if the water temperatures change quite a lot, or there's, a, there's just a bit of a, a stir and change in their environment. They're quite temperamental fish. But if you've got a tank that's well established, Otto Sinkless can be good with these guys. But again, you want to have it really well planted so that these guys have got lots of things to do to keep themselves occupied. Um, a Marno shrimp, what I have in here, so if I can get one for you. This guy up here, moving around the band, I've got this see one there swimming by. A Marno shrimp, they get to around two inches, I believe. So these guys, the puff fish sometimes have a look at them, as you've seen, you know, one tried to nip it earlier on, but by the time they get anywhere near it, the shrimp are gone, so the puffers have learned they're not food. And you want to have them near enough to adult size as possible if you get baby ones i think the chances are the puffers are going to tear them to pieces to be perfectly honest with you but uh, if you get them pretty big that's gerald actually with the iridescent lines you can maybe see on the back of his body there so this one is a male you see behind the eyes as well the iridescent lines so this guy's definitely a male already he's the one that you can definitely tell so far but yeah amano shrimp are brilliant snails are basically going to be food so you know you can feed them Ranton snails, you can feed them pond snails, uh, I believe Malaysian trumpet snails as well, which are, you know, harder shell than Malaysian trumpet snails, but, you know, they can eat the soft parts mainly, so that's, that's not too bad for them. And also Malaysian trumpet snails stir up the sand, so it's good as well for the, for the tank. So yeah, that just about wraps up my video for the introduction to pea puffers. I wanted to do a video basically that collated all the information I got whilst looking out for these guys and how to look after them. See so, yeah, a Amano shrimp showing off here. So I wanted to put all of these bits of research that I've got into one video so it saves you the hassle of having to do all the research I did. Naturally there's always stuff to learn on these guys but I hope that you've really enjoyed this video and um, yeah thanks so much like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon. We'll do a new video every month.